police are continuing to hunt for the masked gunman who shot dead an innocent nine-year-old girl on Monday night. Olivia Pratt Corbel was murdered in her own home whilst being shielded by her mother in the place she should have felt safe but was caught up in the terrifying world of organised gang violence. Tragically, her death is the third fatal shooting in Liverpool in less than a week and, of course, deaths right across the country. Here's what little Olivia's head teacher had to say about her. Olivia was a little ray of sunshine. Um, she was bubbly, she had a little heart of gold, nothing was too much trouble for her. Uh, she loved to help the teachers, she was the life and soul of the class. Joining us now to discuss this is Pastor Lorraine Jones Burrell, who lost her son, Dwayne, to knife crime and works to help to try and prevent tragedies and crimes like this from happening. Uh, we've also got former Scotland Yard Detective Chief Inspector Mike Neville, who says the police are losing control of our uh, streets. Um, I, I'm going to go to you, Lorraine, first. Firstly, I'm going to say sorry for um, your loss. Tell us about Dwayne and how, how long it's been since he was murdered. It seems like it was just the other day. Hearing the news of what has happened to this poor little girl, Dwayne was just 20 years old, 2014. I left him to go shopping to get some groceries. I got back only to find a, a couple of his friends knocking my door saying that Dwayne has been stabbed literally a few minutes from my home. I ran as fast as I could only to see my son with his chest open. He had been stabbed through the heart. This wall of silence that I'm hearing has to break. He, sh he should have been arrested already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's... I mean, how are you this morning? Yeah. Because I'm sure after eight years, um, that moment and the horror that, that, that has been since is always with you. But hearing of Olivia, how have you been on hearing? I haven't slept. Mm. The symptoms of shock has come back. The parents are devastated. Their hearts been shattered. Mm. We're looking at a nine-year-old girl in her home, in the presence of her parents, how safe and beautiful is that? Mm. And a gunman has come into their home and shot her in the chest, killing her in cold blood. Mm. You just have to imagine what the police have visualised, what the coroner will visualise. This is so serious. It's a state of emergency. Right. That's why I'm here. Okay. And, of course, it's... it's... The mum's horror, the horror you've experienced, it's the wider family's horror, it's the, the children in the class of Olivia's school, the devastation, the ripples go on and on and on. I suppose what we're all hoping you're pleading for, you're calling for emergency measures for, is that those awful ripples also lead to positive ripples where people wake up and think, we can't do this anymore. We have to break this somehow. What would you say to those who stayed silent when you were desperate to find Dwayne's killer, who are still silent this morning about the man that indiscriminately shot into a home, killing a nine-year-old child? Um, what would you say to those people surrounding them and to the man himself? I understand we've gone through a lot of challenges, especially with our police. There could be fear, mm -hmm. there could be hopelessness. What's the point? We've got Crime Stoppers. It's anonymous. Anyone can call them. I would appeal to the whole community, those corporates in the gangs and the whole community. Somebody has seen something or heard something. He's at large. Call Crime Stoppers. We did a campaign called Hard Calls. Five mothers that have lost their children. Watch that. We express unreserved grief in that. Mm. Listen with your heart. Look at this little girl. Listen to the parents and make that call and report whatever, you've, whatever you know. <sighs> it's... 
devastating. Mike, uh, devastating. You, you've just heard the powerful words of Lorraine. Uh, thank you for your courage for speaking yeah. to us and for speaking up. And, and just to be clear, your son was acting as a peacekeeper in the situation mm. where he found himself in. You as a community of mums decided to stand up and that's a change that could be really affecting and, and I hope people listen to your words. Mike, you say the police have lost control. Um, you no doubt have seen the front cover of the uh, Liverpool Echo this morning asking this question, what side are you on? Um, <laughs> that isn't really a call to the police, it's a call to the communities there, especially the criminal underworld, who may or are likely to have information to go and help the police. You've heard those powerful Lorraines who, from Lorraine who says it infinitely better and with greater lived experience than any of us sitting here apart from Lorraine could possibly articulate. Um, is this a police issue or is it time that those who know what happened came forward and decided to help the police? It's both, Rob. So even the word, the, the police are right to make this appeal. And there's some good detectives in Merseyside Police. And they're right to make it because some crimes are just so outrageous that even the most wicked villain, the armed robber, the drug dealer, thinks, you know, I've got children of my own. This is just, this person needs to be incarcerated. And as I say, there are so very few of these crimes, but the murder of a nine-year-old girl in her own house while she's been protected by her mother is just disgusting. And we're plumbing the depths of depravity. But what we see also, we saw the murder of the 87-year-old man outside a tube station. We, as as a um, Kate has said there's been three shootings in Liverpool and somehow the police have got to be refocused. There's something very wrong in policing. I looked at Merseyside's website and just last year they were advertising for a diversity and inclusion manager at £50,000 for an ever-growing team. Now that's, that's two police officers that could be employed. The police are engaged in wokery and political correctness, and they've forgotten to deal with things like burglary and theft. And while those crimes go undetected, and 95% of crimes go undetected, the villains feel free to operate. They feel that they can cl they claim the streets, and they are literally, as we see now, calling the shots. And the police have got to be refocused, and the government could do this and say, mm. every role that's not to do with your primary purpose of preventing and detecting crime has got to go. You've got to take control of the streets. This is a, an emergency. This is a crime emergency. Right, uh, right, the police right, have got to change. Mike, part of that uh, inclusion and diversity you're talking about is ways in which we can reach into the community so communities feel that they're represented. Police, where we'll agree, are unfunded full stop. And as you'll be aware, and most people, whatever the community complexion, feel this, you know, thousands of police officers, hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands, we've lost so many, uh, go out every day and risk their lives. We never hear about the thousands of amazing things they do, only when things go wrong. But this is an issue around the cultures of silence. How do the police break those cultures of silence? Well, as, you, well as, a, as a young police officer, I run the local army cadets in Brixton. That's a way to gain trust. The way to gain trust is do things like that, work with the communities, not to be dancing the Macarena or taking the knee or any other fashionable cause. And, to that, and also the detective's plea is very open. And the detectives will be looking into working with informants and, as, as, as the lady has said, with Crime Stoppers to get this information. That's how you can break down this wall of silence. But... Being fashionable all the time and uh, politically correct doesn't win you. Uh, it doesn't win uh, the, the the community's hearts. Working hard with them, the, the working with that kid's football team, so that kid's now grown up and trust the police officer. That's the way to break into communities, and the police just need to change because yeah. the, uh, their yeah. ultimate aim is okay. to is to catch criminals. Well, it, it's mm. powerful words, um, Lorraine. You said this is a state of emergency. How you're a mother, I'm a mother, there are mothers, fathers, grandparents who are all trying to empathise with your pain and the pain of Olivia's um, family this morning. And there are those people in government as well. What needs to happen? What is your prescription for this state of emergency? Oh, Lord, it's not just one answer. No. There's streams of answers. The deprivation within the, the communities is massive. There's been some shift, but not enough. 
to support the hundreds and thousands of youth that need a deep level of intervention in our communities. I can tell you that the inflation problem that we've got now has already hit low-income families with young people that are being pressured into making bad choices and getting into criminality, poverty, wanting the basic of food, water and a shelter and decent air to breathe. All of these avenues need to be looked at and empowered where there's a change. The police, they are doing a tremendous amount of work. They're having to deal with mental ill cases, illness on the streets where the NHS, they need more support so that they can support the number of young people that have increased in mental illness, it's phenomenal. And they're carrying out barbaric behaviours and attacks because of that area. The schools, they need more support, more resources to be able to support young people and children. So there's streams, but the government is at the head. They mm. are at the head. I would have thought there would be a COBRA emergency meeting because we're looking at a nine-year-old girl in her home with her parents that gunmen have gone in there and killed her in cold blood. There's an emergency that is at hand and we can't forget the faith groups. They have a big, yes. play, a big role to play yeah. because they're working with a lot of yeah. families. Everyone needs to be around the table. There needs to be accountability for what they have got in place because there needs to be changes. Lauren, and I, I saw communities so respond uh, 20 years ago and I was dealing with a, a, a murder case. Women of courage like you that came forward that resulted in, in a conviction. What is your message to people out there that may know something but are too scared to come forward. Lorraine, in, in memory of, of your, your son. I'm thinking of this little girl. Her blood is crying out. Please, call Crime Stoppers. If you can't dial 999, call Crime Stoppers. It's anonymous. We can't sit back and let our children be killed. They're being killed in their home. This is a state of emergency and government Please listen to our pleas. Get us around the table and let's deal with this. Wow. Well, we're all listening to you this morning. It's powerful, it's impassioned, and you speak from the heart as one who knows. Thank you so much for your bravery in coming to talk to us this morning. Yeah. Thank you. It's been a privilege to listen to you, Lorraine. And I know millions yeah. up and down the country will feel, the, feel same. the same. Thank you so much.